Hi, here are five tips for getting over bad habits. Number one is to remove opportunities for bad habits. Now this one's probably the hardest to do, but it's the most effective. So there's actually a really cool Bible verse that talks about this. Now don't leave just because you heard the word Bible, okay? Just, just hear me out, it's super powerful. Matthew 5.30 says, If your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it from you, for it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. I know, sounds super extreme, right? But like, the heart of what that's saying is be willing to inconvenience yourself to make yourself a better person. And so what that means practically is to remove the opportunities for bad habits in your life. And obviously this is different for every person, whether that's moving your gaming computer or gaming console out of the room where you work or where you study so you don't have the temptation to do those things, or putting your phone in a different room while you're working or studying so that you're not tempted to just scroll on your phone. For me personally, I only use social media on my computer where I can have a bunch of Chrome extensions that basically make it so that I don't get trapped into all of these algorithms. For YouTube, I have this extension that just makes it so I can only do search. Otherwise, it's just a blank screen. I don't have any recommendations. It's just my subscriptions and then the search bar, and that's it. No recommended videos, no suggested videos, no shorts nothing. Instagram, I've completely removed Reels and the Explore page. Twitch, there's no discovery page at the front, it's just the people that I follow. And I'll put links down below for all of the Chrome extensions that I use for my own productivity that block out all of this stuff, and they're all completely free. So tip number two is to replace bad habits with good habits. So you kind of have to figure out why it is that you want to do some of these bad habits, whether if it's for gaming, if it's the social aspect of it, or if it's, you know, gaining and improving yourself and progressing, or maybe for social media, it's to kind of stay connected with the people that you know, or maybe eating junk food is to just satiate some cravings and hunger. All of these things have good habits that you can replace them with to kind of satiate these same cravings without doing the bad things. If it's for video games and you spend too much time playing video games, especially for me, by my Myself, then you can just limit yourself to just playing games with other people that you care about. Or sometimes my wife and I like to play this game called Polytopia on our phones and basically it's a strategy game where you can just take your turn whenever you want and we're just kind of like constantly playing that. Or like some sort of a Scrabble game where we're just playing back and forth whenever we want to and that kind of prevents me from wanting to play actual games by myself that I feel are a complete waste of my time. Or setting aside one or two nights per week for playing games with people that I care about like my friends and my family. And for social media, if what I'm craving is some sort of personal connection with people, I work from home so I can just go hang out with my family for a little bit. And if your bad habit is eating junk food, we'll replace that with eating things that are actually good for you. The number one thing that's an awesome craving killer is vegetables. Eating like a carrot or a celery stick or a piece of broccoli, just having those things on hand makes it so that whenever you're thinking like, oh man, I want some junk food. No, I'll just go like eat an apple or something. And also protein, really upping your protein intake really kind of curbs your hunger and cravings. So those kinds of things, you can just replace the bad habits with good habits to satiate those same kinds of things. And the thing is, all of this is a snowball effect. Good habits and bad habits alike, you start off doing a little bad habit and then it snowballs into just you being this lazy scum of the earth. <laughs> But also on the flip side, drinking a cup of water and then walking around can encourage you to do more and more good habits. Everything is a snowball effect. Tip number three is to increase the opportunity for good habits, which is kind of the flip side to number one, which is to decrease the opportunities for doing bad habits. So for example, I have my gymnastic rings and these pull-up bar thing handles so that it's more likely for me to just exercise because I see them all the time whenever I'm leaving my room. Even better if you have one of those pull-up bars that goes in your doorway, so you literally, every time you see it, you're like, okay, let me go do a couple of pull-ups or whatever. And if you can't do pull-ups, you can get one of those giant stretchy bands that you tie around it and make it, like, easier. In fact, I have an exercise other than walking, so I'm gonna go do some pull-ups and push-ups. Whew! Okay. Whoa. Okay, so tip number four is combining good habits with bad habits. Let me explain. The better way for me to put it is combining good habits with potentially bad habits. So playing video games for me is potentially a bad habit because I can just get sucked into it and do it way too much. But it can also be a good way for me to connect with my friends and family. So it's a potentially bad habit, right? And so for me, what I do is I combine playing video games with walking on my treadmill so that I'm combining a good habit with 
a bad, potentially bad habit. And there's so many different ways that you can do this. Let's say you feel like you don't have enough time to sit and read fictional novels or to read at all. You can combine that potentially bad habit of getting too sucked into reading and not doing anything else with your life by listening to audiobooks while you're doing some chores or exercising or walking on your treadmill. Link in the description for this treadmill, by the way. Or for browsing social media. Just browse social media while you're exercising or walking on your treadmill. Link in the description for this treadmill, by the way. <laughs> or just wasting your time watching YouTube videos. You can do that while walking on your treadmill. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm done doing that. You get the point. You can combine a good habit with a bad habit and that makes you feel less like you're just wasting your time doing nothing. Now, I'm not saying that you should never set aside time to just relax. I'm just saying sometimes when you get older, life gets busy and it's harder for you to make time for doing good things and doing relaxing slash potentially bad things. And so by combining, two things like gaming and exercise, then you can kind of double dip and it's pretty cool. I don't know. I think it's a good idea. Tip number five, think about the ideal kind of person you want to be and then make YouTube videos or online content as if you are already that person. I'm like kind of half joking here, but you see online so many of these people that are these gurus in whatever field they're in, whether it's productivity or self-discipline or self-improvement or even YouTube gurus themselves or people that are like Twitch streamer gamer YouTube gurus. Essentially, a lot of these people just started making content as if they're already an expert in that field and people who want to be better at that thing will watch those videos and therefore create this loop where the person who was making the video was never really successful at those things to begin with, but because they started making videos, people watched them, therefore making them successful at that thing, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's what I'm doing here, so I can't really complain. Ultimately, nobody's perfect. All we can do is take a step or two in the right direction. Thanks for watching.